Listeners should be aware that the following program contains language and audio images which may be found disturbing and may not be suitable for your snotty-nosed little brat who probably cusses like a sailor behind your back anyway. Parental discretion is advised. It's time to holler down the pipe chase and rattle them bars because we're going to do a prison show for you right here at beautiful old historic old exciting new KPFT Houston from the heart of Montrose where we all hope tomorrow will be a better day. Welcome to the Prison Show, folks. It's uh, Monday night, October 5th, and we are recording for Friday night, October 9th. I uh, hope everybody out there listening to this will call in and, and we'll get you on in the second half. Meanwhile, tonight we've got a good show. We've got uh, Carrie Blakinger on. We've got Sharon Bass on. Uh, we're going to have Anne Marie on. Anne Marie. And uh, we're going to discuss. And, I see Dave Atwood, too. So there we go. I think we've got everybody on here. Uh, at any rate, oh, uh, you know who I don't see is our Spanish-speaking reporters. I'm sure they'll be on here in just a minute. At any rate, uh, we're going to discuss several things, and one of them tonight is a topic that just came up to us, and it's due to a court decision that was just made, uh, wherein inmates in prisons in it started in one state, but it's a federal decision now, so it's now covers all 50 states for the time being. Uh, there's Daniel. Thank you. And it is about inmates being able to apply for the $1,200 uh, check that came to everybody else earlier this year as a part of the pandemic. Relief, you know, pandemic relief, whatever. All right, so at any rate, we're going to go ahead with the show, and we will get back around to that. And... Uh, First up, we have Ms. Sharon Bass from Tilpa. Sharon, how are you doing? I'm good, Hank. How about you? Uh, you know me. I'm like a million bucks every day. Me too. Well, family. Family. I love okay. We got somebody that needs to mute. Yeah, there we go. I got him. All right. Well, I'm he sitting in for... To... Oh. Do something else. Turn that phone off, David. <laughs> Well, I'm, okay. I'm uh, filling in for Jennifer tonight, who's um, taking some time off, so y'all have me for a while, and um, just a few updates for Tiffa, because really uh, the most stuff that's going on is fundraising, so I want to talk about our second annual Run for Justice, and it's going to be virtual style. We're going to do it on Zoom. And we are going to have a full day lineup of speakers, bands, um, ex, ex um, inmates talking, just a full day of being together virtually. So it's going to be from 10 to 4, December 5th. 
Um, registration is up on the TIFA website, so it's TIFA at TIFA.org. If you want to register, you get a pretty cool t-shirt, and we're just going to have a, a lot of fun, and I know that y'all are going to be on Be My Speakers, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep, David or if, Hank, so. If, if yeah. you need us. Well, y'all are going to have an hour, so, you know, just figure out what you want to do for an hour, so whatever you want to do, please. Help me. Um, okay. Okay. So um, the second fundraiser that we're working on is we had some of our guys who normally draw pictures for us to, so we had a Christmas card a holiday art contest and we ended up picking five cards and we're going to use those as a fundraiser. And what we're going to do with that money is we are going to buy denture cream to donate to the chaplains at each unit for those who are indigent and can't afford the denture cream. So we're going to sell a pack of eight cards. I think we came up with the price being about $12 for a pack. So that will be up on the, on the website soon too. And we are printing them on paper that can be sent into the prison. So they are TDC approved paper. So if you want to buy some of those, that will be on there also. Um, one other thing that we're doing, you got a question? Yeah, what, what's the date on the first one, on the first fundraiser? December 5th, Saturday, okay. December 5th okay. from 10 to 4. And you can go ahead and if you have a special time, a specific time, just email me and I'll put you in that slot and move everybody around because you're special. I think right. we'll be celebrating my sister's birthday, so I... Hey! <laughs> Maybe we better put David on me. <laughs> no, it won't matter. You can come on a little tipsy. That's okay, too. No, I'll be okay. Just, just don't let him show his butt. Oh, my. <laughs> hey, y'all want to see something? Uh-uh, <laughs> we don't. We know. <laughs> yeah. So um, another thing that we are we kicked off a couple months ago was our ambassador program. It's from the inside out. And we put in our newsletter and say, hey, guys, if y'all want to be an ambassador on your unit, we'll send you information about what's really going on with the legislative session this year. We got so many requests to be on that program. We're like, okay, now we're going to do a fundraiser for postage. So, but they're, they're going to serve as a communication link because, you know, the rumors are already going that all these bills have passed. So we hope that we can get the correct information into these guys that can um, share that information correctly. And the last thing I have is we have two speakers coming up for our uh, chapter meetings, which we are still doing once a week. All of our chapters are virtually meeting. Nobody has started back face-to-face -face meets. So um, tomorrow, Jennifer Toon will be on, and um, she's an amazing speaker. So if y'all haven't ever heard her speak, just be sure to jump onto that. And again, you can get the link to the Zoom off the TIFA website if you click on their calendar. And then the next Tuesday, the 13th, we're going to have Representative Alma Allen. She's from District 131 Houston, and she was a co-author last session on the Independent Oversight Bill. So she's going to be speaking to us at that meeting and hopefully Maybe she'll give us some good news that she'll co-author that again. So that's our updates. That's about what we've been doing. Now, the call's coming up again Wednesday, right? Oh, yes. The call is, as far as we know, I, I have not heard that we will not have that call. So we may all be on there by ourselves, but... We have not been told that we won't have have that call. Okay. We'll sign on as normal. Okay, so we, uh, yeah, you know, we've been on that call for months and months, and uh, some things have changed, some things haven't changed. So those calls are important, and 
Uh, they're an important source of information for our families because so many of the families uh, hear the rumors from their loved ones and the rumors, the rumor mill, like you mentioned before, is just running wild right now. Uh, people are asking about when visitings are going to start and that sort of thing. And I can tell you from those calls, and you can back this up, TDCJ has not even started discussing those from what they tell us uh, in in-person visits. So... Uh, and I believe their words were not in the foreseeable future. Yeah, yeah. So right. it's it's way off, folks. Just uh, hold what you got and uh, try and write more letters, that sort of thing. Um, you know, try and make sure your loved ones get postage. That's a real problem right now, writing uh, materials. Uh, you know, What's and, going on with the video visitation? Oh. Can they change up? They changed that up, and, and they don't really have any rules posted right now, right? Well, they we got confirmation last week that no children allowed. Right. I think that's pretty pretty crappy to not, yeah. you I know. Have no I idea. Just, in fact, it's just downright cruel. I don't know, but that is... that like is, a permanent thing, or are they going to negotiate that and maybe come up with some way around it? No, but I know one of us will be asking on Wednesday for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. All of us need to be asking on Wednesday for right. sure. Right. You know, and it also, like, I, I've i never been on lockdown for months at a time like that. And I just can't imagine what my mental health would be on lockdown for that long. You know? I just, and the lockdowns have no end in sight because every time somebody tests positive again, there they go, locked down again. You know, right. And, you know, I haven't, I, right? I haven't seen a lot of new mass testing. So it's like, are they just going to quit testing and just let it run everywhere? You know, it's like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they're, they frustrate me and I know most of the stuff they tell us probably isn't, <laughs> we know that it's not like that, but we're just, well, you know, I, I don't want to knock the calls, and I know that the senior staff on there are trying to be, for the most part, trying to be earnest with us and get us information that we ask for and stuff. Uh, but I do know that some of the things we have been told were not accurate after all, and I have some of it even in writing because they'll say one thing, and then I'll get a response back on an issue I raised uh, in writing, and it'll say something different. So, right. And... Amazingly, they're never wrong. They've never made a mistake, and those that inmate's getting everything he needs. <laughs> Nutritious meal, you. plenty of calories. Uh, oh yes, a dark yeah. peanut butter, a, taco oh, taco. a hot dog taco. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting! Oh. Peanut Ew. butter and jelly on corn tortillas. That's that was yeah. from Polunsky. And when I mentioned that, they said, "No, no, we're following the guidelines of nutrition and everything." Right. And I just got another one like that from him. So Gary, Gary's got pictures of that stuff. Oh, yeah. I saw that. That was yeah. just oh, that was like oh. yeah. I, I posted the uh, the hot dog in a whatever that was tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> with a, with remember the whole raw unpeeled potato. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, That's they can make are. a pipe. But I've never had that. I'll be honest. They can make a pipe out yeah. of that potato. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey. All right. We got one minute left, Sharon. How can everybody get a hold of you? Um, they can reach us um off the web through our website at tifa at tifa dot org. I don't know the phone number. It'll be on the website. Okay, yeah. The phone number's or, on the website. Or the Facebook page. Or the yeah. Facebook page, so you can reach us off Facebook page or the TIFA website. But inmates don't have that. Well, Then they can write us at Post Office Box 300-220, Austin, Texas, 7... Oh, hold on, it's on here. 8703. Very good. Okay. I had to get that in. Thank you, Sharon. All right. All right. Thank Hang you for there, coming y on. All right. Thanks. I'm we missed you. I will. Thank, Thank you. you.
All right, now let's go ahead and move right into Carrie Blakinger. She's ready to go, it looks like. I see her smiling there. <laughs> hey, so How you doing? Um, I'm okay. Um, you guys are talking about video visits. I actually happened to have called uh, Jeremy Diesel with some questions about that uh, a day or two ago. Um, the reason that he had told me for the not allowing children was well, because um, there could be people that uh, are sex effects. Can you hear me? Yeah, David, David, oh, David Atwood. You need David. Oh, yeah, there oh, we go. Okay. Um, Sorry. It was because um, some people are sex offenders, and um, also because they don't know if, like, if somebody can't see a certain kid because of whatever custody or CPS issues, um, they just don't currently have an ability to police that and like know which kid that is. Um, I didn't get any indication that they had any plans to try to change that. I don't. I didn't really get a clear answer as to how this is different from policing which kid shows up in person when you're doing in-person visitation. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you know, it's, I don't know, it's pretty early in the process. I mean, you know, maybe they'll, I, I mean, may, maybe they'll change this. Um, they also, he also said that they're doing a pilot project at a small number of facilities. He wouldn't tell me how many uh, or which ones yet um, using tablets that are not the securest system that are like, TDCJ, and the idea was that it's a lot easier to roll that out um, more broadly, more quickly than with Securus. Uh, and he stressed that these are things that they've been exploring before COVID, and this wasn't directly because of COVID. Um, so yeah, that's I mean that's all that's all I've got on on that. Um, uh, also, uh, you guys mentioned mass testing, like are they just gonna quit testing or what? And um, well, they don't actually have a plan. <laughs> um, and I'm not just making that up. <laughs> this actually came up in court. Like this was- I think you um, can make that up. <laughs> I, I, I know, I think no one listening will be surprised. But so, uh, and that relates to the main thing I wanted to talk about, which was the PAC lawsuit. Um, there was, you know, Judge Ellison put out an order on Tuesday, so it would have been after the last show taped, um, that was, you know, you know, that basically sided with the inmates. They didn't get everything they asked for, but, you know, they, this was definitely a ruling in their favor. Like, they definitely won. It was, you know, an 80-page ruling, which um, TDCJ appealed the same day. Um, right. so, so it's now being appealed again to the Fifth Circuit. Um, I mean, I don't... I mean, obviously, the Fifth Circuit has not been friendly to this case in the past, but um, the 18 days of trial, you know, there's a lot of stuff that came out in there, and this is a, a, there's a, there's a lot of evidence that doesn't really look good for the agency. Um, and one of the things was regarding the mass testing. I mean, this is not certainly the biggest point out of that, but since that's one thing, you know, that we were talking about, one thing that came up was that they never created a written plan for, like, their strategy for testing or retesting um, or sort of at what frequency, um, you know, and obviously to their credit, they have done a lot of testing. Um, they like to point out that they've done more testing than any other prison system, but they're bigger than any other prison system. So like, duh. Um, but, you know, but they did, they, they did do a lot of testing. Like I don't, I don't want to, you know, minimize that. Um, they don't have a written plan though. And that's what came up a lot in court. Um, you know, there's also some remarkable things out of this, um, out of this lawsuit here, or out of the order, out of the judge's order on Tuesday. Um, there's one part where there is this, I, I just wanted to read this little section because I thought that some of the people listening would really appreciate this. So there's a section where the, um, the, the SSIs were talking about not getting enough cleaning chemicals and, um, not getting enough soap and, you know, just all, all of the sorts of things that you would hear about and would expect. And several of them testified about it. Um, and the in TDC said that, you know, they, they do get enough of these things and that, you know, um, I, th I think they might have said that the, that, that there was like an auditor or a higher up of some kind that had visited the unit and determined this. But um, in any case, they said, you know, TDC officials on the stand said that, you know, they get these supplies. And um, after listening to testimony from a bunch of prisoners, the judge wrote, 
The court finds the testimony of individual janitors with direct knowledge of their day-to-day -day activities more credible than statements by high-level TDCJ officials. And I just thought that was really remarkable. Um, it's, it's not just that the judge was willing to believe prisoners, um, but that he actually took the time to, like, spell it out like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that's... I, I haven't read something like that before. Um, I, I'm sure it happens, but, you know, in Texas, um, that's pretty remarkable. Well, um, you can count on it happening more into the future as more cases like this come up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other part of this that I thought was worth um, noting was, you know, he – the judge runs through all of the things that TDCJ did because, you know, they did do, they did take steps, you know, I mean, I'm not going to act right. like they did nothing. Like they did take steps to, you know, uh, deal with this. Um, and he wrote, you know, the court acknowledges that TDCJ has taken a number of steps to address the spread of COVID at the PAC unit. But the court views these measures as the most basic steps that TDCJ could have taken to prevent mass death within the prison walls on an unimaginable scale. Designing a policy and implementing some of the measures therein does not automatically satisfy defendants' constitutional obligations, especially in the face of an unprecedented public health crisis. And, you know, and again, I thought that was kind of remarkable that, yeah. you know, that the judge was... Um, you know, was was really so clear about it, like, in terms of both acknowledging that they've done stuff, but, like, here's why that's not enough. Because I feel like, it, you know, the Fifth Circuit previously um, had been like, well, they've got policies, like, you know, they're doing things. And he was like, yes, and here are those policies, and here's why those haven't been enough or they haven't worked out. Um, so those are some of the sort of most interesting parts of that lawsuit. The... Um, in terms of what the, the, the prisoners got, there's, you know, a, a ton of, I mean, it's two pages of, uh, yeah, it's like two pages of things that they got. Um, but, you know, a lot of it is stuff that is pretty basic or things that should have already been occurring or that TDC purported were occurring. Um, some of them are very basic, like document in writing all policies related to COVID, um, enforced social distancing, enforced wearing of PPE. They did say that wheelchair inmates have to get hand sanitizer, um, which, you know, obviously we all know is um, a big deal in that, you know, TDC has not been willing to do that. But the argument was that, you know, if you're in a wheelchair and you have to be touching the dirty wheelchair wheels, so if you wash your hands, it becomes almost instantly meaningless because you have to wheel back. Um, and, oh, and another thing worth noting, which I think I, I might have mentioned this before, or maybe somebody has, but one of the things that I think really stuck out to people in, in the order on Tuesday, which also came up in trial, was um, when they were talking about, uh, when, when they, there was testimony about how they tried to keep the unit cleaner during the pandemic and, you know, to try to keep people in one dorm, they had the wheelchair inmates, they didn't have like outside SSIs coming to clean. So they started assigning, you know, the wheelchair inmates to be janitors. Um, and, at, and one of them had, I, he, I think he, so he's in a wheelchair. I think he'd had a stroke on one side, maybe I forget. Um, but he's blind and that there was, you know, a blind janitor in a wheelchair, um, which is something that I think really shocked people who aren't familiar with the system. Um, and, you know, I, I got a lot of strong responses from that every time that I mentioned that to someone, um, TDCJ defended that saying that, you know, he could still sort of put the broom against his neck and push it with his wheelchair. Um, but, you know, I also think it's remarkable that it's made something that was not previously something you could sue over into something that you now can sue over. You, you couldn't bring that up in, you, you couldn't complain about uh, a wheelchair person being, you know, being assigned to being a janitor before because it wasn't fatal. But like now, an inability to keep the unit clean could be fatal. So I, I think one interesting thing about this pandemic is how it's made things possible to litigate that you couldn't before. Well, I'm getting all the signals. We're yeah, a little yes, ahead no, of I'm schedule, so I, we... I'm seeing them. We actually do have a little extra time because we're a little no, bit ahead of schedule. because we got Anne-Marie. 
Anne Marie's on to talk about that. Oh, that's, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's not on it. Schedule? Yeah. I got, uh, I, I got the new one, but I didn't realize there was a difference. Okay. Uh, okay. So thank you, Carrie. Thank you so much. Uh, great work as always. And you know, there are other things coming. I'm sure you've got a little lineup. Oh yes. I'm working on a, a documentary about TDC. So. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. We're happy to help if we can. All right. And I'll talk to you guys. Oh, okay. Thank cool. you. All right. Bye. Bye. Anna Marie, how are you doing? I'm good. How are y'all? Uh, well, you know, I'm like a million bucks. Everybody else is like two million. There you but, go. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, all right. So let, uh, one thing I want to mention real quick before we get into this. Uh, mm -hmm. I got a response back today uh, regarding the flu shots, and a lot of people have asked about this already. The flu shots are approved for everyone this year, but they've been telling people no at the units because the, the policy about this hadn't rolled all the way out yet, I guess. Uh, people down on the, on the floor in the units don't know that TDCJ is going to make, according to Myra Walker in medical and UTMB, uh, she contacted the pharmacist for TDCJ and they're gonna make them available to everyone high risk first. So it may take them several weeks to get it rolled out for, uh, for the high risk folks. Uh, after that, you know, if you request it, you should be able to get it. Now, uh, I'm sure we'll get a lot of, oh, that's not what I heard, but that's what I heard today, this afternoon from UTMB's uh, person on the job. All right, Anne-Marie. The stimulus checks. Yes. So um, on September 24th, there was a ruling in a class action lawsuit. It was uh, Scholl et al. versus Mnuchin, who is the uh, Secretary of Treasury of the United States. And so now incarcerated people are across, across the U.S. are eligible for the CARES Act for their $1,200 with some stipulations for eligibility. So I've got that information as well as some of the information to call T, uh, TDCJ to make sure that they're aware because we need to make sure that there's a process behind it as well as the information in the forms. I see you have them too. So I yeah. think we have some of the same resources, but we can definitely make sure everybody gets them. So basically I've got, uh, there's four requir requirements for eligibility and you've got to meet all of them. So a U US citizen or permanent resident. So it's not for undocumented people. Um, and then you are not married to someone who lacks a social security number or have a child who lacks one unless uh, you or your spouse served in the armed forces in 2019. And all of this is for filing the 2019 tax return. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you file the tax return in 2018 or 19, or you are exempt from doing so because your income in 2019 was below 12,200 a year, or if married and filed jointly, 24,400 a year. And the final requirement is not claimed as a dependent on another person's tax return. Um, and just to introduce myself, my apologies. Um, I'm Anne Marie, I'm an uh, abolitionist organizer and uh, my comrade, Allie, she's the one who compiled all this research and I'm just here today making sure everybody gets it. Um, and today on the 5th uh, of October, actually there was an update which allowed for uh, non-filers, so people who haven't filed their 2019 tax return yet, um, it allows them to file on November 21st. So if they're mailing the paper tax return, it needs to be postmarked by that date, the 21st. But for regular filing, it's still uh, October 15th. So that's in 10 days from now. And they just decided all of that today. So they did extend it for some people. And we've got Can the you link. Can you that information with me? Pardon? Can yeah, you I've got that the link for that. It, send it David, to David at prisonshow.net. Okay. It's in the first link that you posted. Oh, is it? Yeah. To the extension? Uh, well, it talks about, uh, let's see. It didn't have oh, the, extent, the extension is the new part, right yeah. Now. Yeah, but it's got all the other uh, stuff there so people can find it. And I'll it email it to you as well. There Thank we go. You so and, much. And we'll add that to the post on the Facebook page so everybody can have it. Awesome. So families and friends should uh, snail mail it, the 1040 paper tax returns to their loved ones or file on behalf online. So you need to make sure you include their inmate number in the address field. And uh, folks inside will need uh, three things, their social security number, their bank number, and their routing number. 
if they don't have a bank account, then the check gets mailed to the prison itself. So that's why then we need to make sure that TC, TDCGA, excuse me, has a process for this. So we've got also some phone numbers to call, to contact, to make sure that uh, we let them know exactly what's going on. So uh, one of the first options is to call directly, and that's at 936-295-6371. And the court case is Scholl et al. versus Mnuchin. And so if you mention that and let them know that they need to distribute the 1040 tax returns to everyone in their custody immediately and in advance of that uh, November 21st non-filer deadline. The second thing to do that you can do is uh, call the executive director, Brian Collier, in Huntsville. And so that's the 936-437-2101. And in Austin, it's 512-463-9988. And the same thing, just make sure you mention the court, the case name, and uh, the 1040 returns before November 21st. And then the final one is personally for your loved ones. Uh, just have call personally their respective uh, prisons or jails and let them know because information, as we know, is not always distributed properly to us or to people that are involved. So um, letting them know exactly what needs to be done and what's being sent and that way they can be held accountable for distributing both the forms and the checks themselves. I didn't see anything in any of the stuff that requires TDCJ to provide the forms. Okay. Um, Normally that's an IRS function or you get yeah, them yourself. So I'm assuming it would be that the IRS should have it delivered to the prisons themselves because this was a a class action ruling, um, but I'm not sure if they would then go to their respective families or homes or addresses like that. So that's something that I can definitely check into and email y'all if there's more information about. Yeah, you can you can get the 1040 file off of the prison show's post about it. Uh, okay. Or the uh, there's another 1040, a different one. Uh, that's also available there. It's in the uh, link where it's eight pages of a PDF. And both of them are in that. Uh, and, I, you know, to save time, because we know right now the mail in TDCJ is tremendously slow, it would be a good idea for the families to get this ball rolling and not have to wait on the inmate to write, get a letter out to somebody, get a response back. The 15th goes by, the 21st goes by. Take the bull by the horns, families. Yeah, we've sent in, um, Allie and I have gotten out a couple of the forms to people over the past uh, over the past week, so we're trying to get it out immediately because uh, of all of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. TDCJ, uh, the mail is tremendously bad, and then there's USPS issues on top of that, so the mail's bad all around. <laughs> yeah, right now especially. Well, you know, we thank you so much for uh, bringing this information to us, and folks, you, you can... Uh, Go on the Facebook page, The Prison Show, and just scroll down. You'll see the thing about getting your $1,200 check on there. And there are three links on there. There will be four after we get yours on uh, about the extension. But you'll have all... Oh, okay, great. Uh, So you'll have all the information in one spot that you can go to. Even the form is in there. So, you know, don't don't despair. Just get after it and do it now because the deadline is going to roll up really fast. Anne Marie, how can they get a hold of y'all? Um, we are both on social media. Um, I am at basic v e y s i c c. Um, I'm not sure how uh, Ali would like to be contacted, but I can get that information to y'all too. But we mm-hmm. are local abolitionists in Houston and Austin, so we're trying to make uh, make things a little easier for some people. And now, isn't there an organization you're both affiliated with? She's affiliated with a 400 plus one. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, we sure thank you for uh, coming on and sharing that information with us. Uh, it, you know, the, the information I read that says there are at least 80,000 inmates across the nation who qualify, and that could be quite a few more just depending on who hits those first four criteria. Exactly. So, and it's a, a, the total amount they figure right now is about $100 million worth of stimulus checks. So that's a lot of $1,200 checks or, you know, some people uh, get a little less depending on income, that sort of thing. There, there were some criteria involved in that back when they started it. But it's a good, a good thing to know, good information for people to have. Go get your money. <laughs> Seriously.
Thank, thank you, you so much. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you all for having me. Thank you all so much. Thank you for coming on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so that's quite a bit of information in one time. Uh, don't forget about the flu shots either. And uh, let me see, we are, let me find Mr. David, I see him. Dave Adwood sitting in the dark at home there in the Rocky Mountain highs of Colorado. Yeah, here I am. Is up it here cold about 7,200 7, feet. Wow. Um, What's the temperature? temperature? I don't know. It's pretty warm today, actually. Uh, I think it's, it was in the 70s today. A beautiful day. A lot of beautiful leaves out because, you know, in the fall, they the aspen come out and everything, so it's very nice here. But here I am sitting in the dark. <laughs> hey, and by the way, I got a couple of signals that said that my internet was not stable. So if you lose me halfway through this, that's what's going on. I'm up in the mountains. The internet's not probably quite as strong up here. But greetings to all, all the, what, Dave? Is the electricity off? No, I got electricity. Uh, his yeah. light's off, that's all. I got yeah. two lights on. I don't know why it's so dark. <laughs> but uh, it is, anyway. Uh, greetings to all the guys on death row this evening and everybody else that's listening in. Um, not a big change since my report on executions last week. Uh, we still have three in Texas. One more was called off. Several, uh, seven federal executions. Uh, there's one more federal plan for November. And there's two more uh, executions planned in Tennessee before the end of the year. However, there's no more executions planned in Texas at this time, which is good news. Now, uh, I want to just mention a couple of things here. Uh, one thing that I think is significant, although you don't know whether this is going to really happen, but apparently in the National Democratic Platform, there is a plank in there for abolition of the death penalty. I don't know if that's been in there before, and I don't know if it would happen, <coughs> even if it's in there, because this is politics. But, um, but I think it's significant that it's in there. And there's a history, of course, in Texas. When I first started working on the death penalty in Texas, you know, the Democratic Party in Texas wasn't any different from the Republican Party when it came to this issue. Uh, but now, uh, for several years now, the re, uh, Democratic Party in Texas has had a plank in their platform for abolition of the death penalty. That was a result of a lot of hard work by a lot of people around the state but it's a reality now. That doesn't mean we're going to abolish the death penalty in Texas right away. We still have people in power that favor the death penalty. A bit of good news is that there were two other death sentences that were reversed in Texas because of intellectual disability, which means uh, we used to call that mental retardation. These were both foreign nationals. Uh, one guy, uh, Gilmore Guerva from El Salvador. A lot of people don't know we have people from other countries on our death row in Texas. I don't know what the number is right now, but at one time we had about 20 or so. Most of them are from Mexico. And then Juan Lizcano, if I'm pronouncing that right, from Mexico, also had his death sentence reversed. And they both got life sentences which isn't any great thing. I mean, let me tell you, that's that's another kind of a death sentence. I think we all know that. But at least it's they're off death row. I think life in the regular prisons are a little bit better than death row. Where everybody is in solitary confinement all the time, without a TV, uh, no contact visits. You know, it's a horrible life anyway. But at least these two guys are off death row. And then, that's, I think, good news, and I suspect they believe it's good news, too. Now, both of these guys that were taken off death row 
Uh, that's a result of a Supreme Court decision many years ago, which said that it was unconstitutional to execute somebody who was, uh, back then it was mental retardation, now it's intellectual disability. That was a Supreme Court decision. Texas fought that Supreme Court decision over and over and over again and tried to execute people that were proclaimed by medical experts as being intellectually disabled. But that, uh, they finally got beat back by the Supreme Court and uh, these two guys uh, are the beneficiaries. There's probably a number of other guys on death row right now who are intellectually disabled and also need to be taken off death row. Now, uh, one of the things that I've mentioned this before on the show, that even though we have the Supreme Court ruling on intellectual disability, we still execute people who are severely mentally ill. And uh, this is something that needs to change. It should change at the Supreme Court to cover all the different states, but we still execute people who are severely mentally ill and we've executed the number of people in that category in Texas over the years. That's wrong, that should not be the case. I wanna to mention too, that there's a new report out of the Death Penalty Information Center. By the way, you can go online to that organization. They do great work. Uh, but the title of the report of the persistency of racial discrimination in, U in application of the US death penalty. So there's a new report they came out with just uh, in September that if anybody uh, is interested, I've brought it up a number of times that we do have uh, racial discrimination and how the death penalty is applied in this country. It's been going on for a long time. It goes back to the days of uh, lynching and the, hist the history of this country. And, uh, and you see it today in the fact that most executions even take place in the south, in the southern part of this country. Uh, just to finish up, I want to mention that uh, Pope Francis recently issued another very lengthy document that uh, called again, it covered a number of different subjects, but it did again call for abolition of the death penalty. He appealed to Catholics around the world to oppose the death penalty. There are many Catholics that do. There are many Christians that do. There are many Jews that do. There are many Muslims that do. But there are people that even though they say they're from a certain faith tradition, they still support the death penalty. And the last thing I'll mention tonight is that today is October 5th. On October 10th is World Day against the death penalty. Um, there are activities all around the globe to do away with the death penalty. Uh, anybody that's listening in tonight, grab your sign, go out and do a protest, write a letter to the governor, write a letter to the editor, write a letter to your legislator, and say that you'd like to get rid of this horrible death penalty that does no good for society. It does not do any good for Texas. Uh, let's get rid of it. Uh, we can move beyond that. We can be a more civilized state and a more civilized nation than we are right now. And so I encourage everybody to do something on October the 10th or do it before October the 10th if you're gonna write a letter and, uh, and do it. And, speak out and protest the death penalty. That's my report for tonight, Hank. I can't hear you. Try it again. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. I had a little trouble with my earbuds and uh, the mic on them, so I ended up having to okay. just unplug them for the time being. Okay. Uh, but, all right. So thank you so much, and we'll have you on again in uh, two weeks. Two weeks, right. I believe so. Be yeah. probably, maybe I'll be at 8,900 feet at that time. I'm getting <laughs> higher all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All okay. right, thank you so much. All right, all right. now let's move to our Spanish-speaking reporter who, uh, do you have your sidekick with you tonight? Uh, I'm by myself. I'm by myself tonight. Okay. And um, I'm glad that uh, Diana... 
uh, she had a family emergency, nothing serious, but uh, I'm glad that she's, uh, she's part of the gang now so that we can <clears throat> lean on each other if we need, uh, uh, you know, to, to help our families or friends uh, sometimes on Friday. Well, she night. did it without you last week, so yeah, yeah. I guess you're paying her back now, huh? Exactly, yeah. Well, it is a good uh, teamwork. I'm uh, very glad and, and proud of, of the gang. That, that we are. Así que muy buenas noches a todos. Daniel os habla aquí. Un saludo, un abrazo a todos los que estáis sufriendo ahí detrás eh, de los barrotes en la cárcel en estos momentos tan difíciles de COVID-19. <coughs> Esperamos daros algunas noticias e informaciones y esperanzas para que podáis estar un poco mejor vosotros, los amigos que os apoyan y las familias que habéis dejado en casa, con las madres, los hijos, eh, los maridos o las mujeres, las esposas que han quedado ahí. Así que muy buenas noches a todos y un abrazo de parte de todo el Prison Show, que estamos aquí para vosotros. Os quiero recordar eso, os damos las buenas noches y os decimos que estamos aquí eh, para vosotros. Y yo estoy aquí eh, traduciendo lo que han dicho todos estos colegas y amigos y profesionales sobre la temática alrededor de las cárceles en Texas que esperamos que os puedan servir. Mucho para daros informaciones a vosotros, pero un poquito también para denunciar esos casos de injusticia que siempre pasan en cualquier institución, sea federal, sea estatal o local. Y aquí estamos, así que si queréis llamarnos o escribirnos por si hay que hacer alguna investigación sobre algún tema particular, sobre alguna institución eh, de la que tengáis noticias. De hecho, tenemos hasta periodistas que están aquí con nosotros, que hablan siempre con nosotros y que nos ayudan a descubrir esas partes más difíciles donde solo la profesión de, de un periodista puede llegar. Y después tenemos muchísimos voluntarios, muchos de ellos que a lo mejor ya han dejado de trabajar y están jubilados y que tienen el tiempo, la calidad del tiempo para poder dedicarse a, a estudiar casos donde se requiere una, un tiempo adecuado para poder hacerlo. Y así es lo como hacemos nosotros, así es como estamos aquí eh, colaborando entre nosotros en la gang. Como veis, somos... Eh, eh, más de una decena de personas y como sabéis os damos una hora también para que podáis hablar vosotros eh, con, con vosotros en las familias y los amigos con los eh, que están en la cárcel y que nos pueden escuchar a través de la radio de KPFT Houston el 90.1 y que ahora estamos también en Facebook y como veis grabando algunos días antes eh, para, porque, porque con la situación del COVID no podemos ir a, a, la, a la radio físicamente. De hecho, hoy es lunes, 5 de octubre, y lo que estamos diciendo ahora se editará, lo transformaremos en un eh, formato que sea audio para mandarlo a la radio y que la radio tenga el tiempo de digerir todos los programas que llegan desde las casas como estamos haciendo nosotros mismos, para poder mandarlo al momento justo. Así que que sepáis que esta es la razón por la que grabamos el lunes, pero vosotros nos escucháis en la radio el viernes. Esto es muy importante para que sepáis el tipo de noticias que os damos. Vamos con cuatro días de retraso respecto a, a lo que era la marcha habitual cuando íbamos en directo efectivamente en el estudio eh, de Lovett Boulevard. Ahora tenemos muchos problemas, así que si también os estáis escuchando y os interesa de verdad lo que hacemos, ayudarnos. Hay una necesidad económica muy importante. Tenemos la estación de radio que se está cayendo a pedazos ahora que no estamos nosotros y las puertas están cerradas, ni siquiera el aire entra y ha salido mucho mo y es un ambiente insalubre donde no se puede ni siquiera trabajar y tenemos que invertir un mínimo de 15 mil dólares para poder limpiar simplemente los estudios y volver ahí. Y quizás un día volveremos. Bueno, pues eso me parece que de vez en cuando lo tengo que decir. Eh, recordaros por qué estamos aquí. 
es una cosa eh, fundamental para la sociedad que eh, una comunidad como la de la que está alrededor de la cárcel pueda tener una voz, una voz propia, independiente y aquí estamos en la casa eh, que nos da esta voz independiente en The Prison Show. Y los principios guías que nunca tenemos que olvidar por los que hablamos o por lo menos por el que yo hablo son siempre, son siempre los mismos, desde hace cuatro años que sabéis que estoy aquí con vosotros, es el de tener una justicia social, de redistribuir lo, los derechos, lo, los recursos, las oportunidades eh, y también la proporcionalidad de, de la pena, eh, la proporcionalidad que tiene que estar relacionada a la seriedad del delito que se ha cometido también hay que subrayar la parsimonia, o sea, no hay que dar más pena de lo necesario, eso es uno de los pilares en los que creemos, y también el derecho a la ciudadanía. Si hay un ciudadano que se, en, se encierra en una cárcel detrás de unos barrotes, dentro de unos muros, en una eh, habitación tan pequeña, hay que tratar a tal preso como si fuese un ciudadano, aunque haya cometido lo que haya cometido, no hay que violar sus derechos fundamentales de ser humano, de pertenecer a una sociedad, como simplemente dejarle tener el derecho a la educación y a la salud y pocas otras cosas más, pero a veces se nos olvida y cuando las personas están dentro de ese sistema tan aislado y secreto, es difícil saber si esos derechos eh, los siguen teniendo o no. Hemos tenido eh, como primer huésped al periodista del que os hablaba antes, la periodista Kerry eh, Blackinger, que nos ha dicho que los, una periodista de uno de los eh, periódicos más importantes de la ciudad de Houston, el Houston Chronicle, nos dice que los, eh, los inmates eh, que hicieron una causa al, al sistema de cárceles de Texas, el PAC Unit, eh, hicieron una causa por la mala administración eh, que, tu, que tuvieron eh, del, del COVID, bueno, pues han ganado. Han ganado y Hank aquí me está haciendo unas señales que no sé qué quiere decir, pero me parece que I have, still have like three minutes, maybe that's what uh, Hank says. No, no pitch. Oh, pitch. Oh, of course. Uh, This is uh, our uh, first fun drive show. Sí, sí, Hank, I've been pitching for the very first four minutes, explaining what we do, explaining the reasons why we do it with our, our pillars, uh, why we uh, strongly believe in this uh, environment that we are creating of freedom of speech, where we can really say what we think without any uh, person, institution or private entity that is uh, pushing us uh, to say anything. So for sure, Uh, that is uh, uh, something that stays in the background forever, like the background I have here behind my, my shoulders. Uh, eso es algo que ya os he dicho. Eh, otra cosa que os quería decir es que la periodista nos seguía diciendo que TDCJ todavía no tiene muy claros los, eh, los planes para, para el test del COVID. No dice cada cuánto hay que hacer el test, no tiene ni siquiera un documento escrito. Henke nos ha dicho también que si queréis las vacunas para la gripe, lo que se se llama el flu shot para la, la, la gripe de este invierno del 2020-2021. Eh, eh, sabe, Hank, que lo ha sabido hoy, que el flu shot sería para todos. Everybody should have the flu shot. Y sobre todo con una prioridad. Uh, the priority is uh, uh, for those critical cases. Uh, así que los casos críticos uh, tendrán prioridad, pero el flu shot should be for everybody. Eh, nos ha dicho también Ana Mary que el stimulus check, que era de 1.200 dólares, se aplicará también a las personas que están en la cárcel. Así que informaros sobre esto, podéis visitar la página Facebook de The Prison Show y ahí uh, sabréis que hay 80.000 personas que están en la cárcel que podrán eh, recibir estos 1.200 dólares. Y por último, eh, last but not least, Dave was here with us y nos, eh, y nos hablaba de otras tres ejecuciones, ya lo sabíamos, pero hay otras tres ejecuciones antes del fin de año. La, la nota positiva es que no va a haber más. Eh, y una nota para acabar, que nos dice siempre Dave, to, uh, uh, 
we finish with, with a hop, uh, with a message of the Pope, uh, que nos dice el Papa Francisco, que ha sacado otro documento para oponerse oficialmente a la pena de muerte. Un señal de esperanza eh, que tal vez coincide con el 10 de octubre, el día dedicado a la oposición a la pena de muerte. Uh, October the 10th is the day dedicated to the uh, abolishment of the death penalty. So with this, I'm done. I hope I stay in my 10 minutes. Now, let me see. We're about ready to go to a uh, break song and then to our callers. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're ready to take our callers now and uh, the first caller I need to get is probably a recorded call, Miss Bella. Hey, Jedediah. Hey, baby. I love you and miss you. And I am praying it won't be much longer before they open up the visit. And guess what? Cassie just sent me a text. She was asking me if I thought it would be okay if she writes to you. And I told her you would love to hear from her. And she said her mother and sister want to write too. So, um, uh, how she was telling me that she still has all of your letters, baby. And she wanted me to tell you that she has two beautiful little girls. So I told her she should put a picture of them in the letter so you can see them. And anyway, it was just really nice to hear from her. And let's see what's going on. Oh, Jedi, the probate hearing is October the 13th. Well, that's when it's scheduled for, but Emily said that won't be happening. So we'll see what goes on with that. And Crazy Austin is sitting here watching um, those Michael Myers movies. <laughs> He's scared to death, Jedi. I thought if it scares you that much, don't watch them. But here he is sitting on the couch watching them anyway. Let's see. I wanted to tell you the last letter I received was written on September 15th. So I don't know what's going on in the mail room, but it's almost at a standstill. But I'm praying and hoping I get mail from you tomorrow. So, baby, you take care and stay safe for me. I love you, Jedi. I night and sweet dreams. Okay. Uh, Ms. Tiffany, let's get your call on. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, good evening. Thank you guys for doing this. This is Tiffany calling for Rodney Reed at Polumsky. Just calling to say hi, Rodney, and let you know that I'm thinking about you and we're working very hard. There's a lot going on in your case that um, I'm excited about. And just keep the faith. Hope you're doing well and um, take good care. And thank you, everybody at KPFT. Good night, well, you thank guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we're ready for Devin, a recorded call. Hello, this is Devin Eversole for my husband, A.B. Eversole at Barrington Unit. So, first of all, shout out to all of L-Line, who just keeps getting kicked in the shins with these perpetual lockdowns. Sorry for you guys, um, and also the rubber band bandit, and look out for that guy, and Shorty Low and Squirrel, and I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to Snowball and Gang too, and there was Shorty Low and Squirrel, but my husband, I miss you right now, I'm hoping you're going to be able to call before I have to go to work. Or able to call when I get home, but obviously unpredictable. But I miss you and can't wait till we get to talk more at length soon. Talk more about this book we're reading together. We love you. We'll be waiting for your call. Mwah. Okay, let's go with. Uh... Well, uh, Gwen, are you ready? Hello, Gwen. I Hello. am ready. I am ready, but you're early. I wasn't expecting to be on this early. Okay, well, there is no set time for callers. It's just between 9 and 10. Okay. This is for Jason at the Darrington unit. Hi, honey. How are you tonight? I know you're enjoying the cool weather. 
I think it's probably good camping weather, right? As always, everybody out here is doing good. And I don't want to jinx it, but your mom is doing really, really well at following the rules of her recovery. She's tired of it for sure, and she says so a lot. But she really is doing great. I've not heard from you in a good minute, so I'm hoping you're feeling all right. Um, and before I forget, Daisha made me pinky swear to remember to tell you she says hi. So hi. Um, and I have to tell you in a letter about her weekend, it was awful, but it was so funny. Um, nothing else is really going on. Church started another service on Sundays this week. Wednesdays are starting back this week. Um, so things are slowly getting back to what we know. Only two more things need to happen. I need to get a job. And you know what the other one is, don't you? I'm so ready. Baby, there really is nothing happening out here. Like nothing. Maybe that'll change soon. Today's Monday, but right now for you it's Friday, so it's been a week. Maybe there's been something worth writing to about to you about. Okay, babe, I'm gonna go. Daisha and I are in a game of rummy that I need to get back to. She's about as good at rummy as Logan is at Monopoly, which means I have to really pay attention because I lose sometimes. Baby, I love you so much and I miss you. I'm sending you lots of hugs and kisses and sweet dreams tonight and every night until you're home. Good night, baby. Sweet dreams. I love you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, can we get uh, Miss Diana's call on here? Recorded call. Hi, this is for my husband, Preston, at the Win Unit. Um, honey, I just wanted you to know that I love you and I miss you. Um, I hope you have a good day, and I hope that um, you're being good and everything. Um, I'm just here with Pita and we're doing the school stuff and so I'm going to put her on the phone and see if she wants to say she loves you but if not I am sending along the video from the one I got her recorded a few days ago so let me see okay well I guess not but um I'll go ahead and send the rec other recording all right honey I love you bye bye Dave, you want to go ahead and play that other one? Sure will. I love hearing the daughter. Yeah. Daddy, Lily, Daddy, I will kiss you, Daddy. Have a day, 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 day. Okay, Mike Lewis, are you ready? Yeah, I'm Viking ready. Also wanted to wish everybody a happy Leif Erikson Day this coming Friday. The Vikings discovered America 1,000 years ago. And now uh, let me do some shout outs here real quick and start some pitching. The uh, the uh, guys of Texas, do some shout-outs to Dennis Hope, Jamie Cuppet, Stephen Russell, Guy Alexander. Shout-out to Michelle Bateman, Manuel Marino, Michael Marino, Haas, K Money, Yovan, Philip Perez. Shout-out to Philip in Dallas. Uh, Tasha wants me to do a shout-out to Payday. Shout-out to Oz, Thomas, Matthew. Shout-out to Edward Ruiz, Adam Wilkerson, Barry Barrett. Shout out here for uh, Michael S. Garcia, Juan F. Carlos Esparza, uh, F. Bernard, Howard S. Pruitt, Jose Herrera. Now I'm going to go through uh, my shout outs. Okay, Leo Caballo, Christopher Dye, Kenneth Kebble. Special shout out to Clarence Lee Bowman. Hopefully, you're getting better. Uh, Samuel Harris, Ernest Matthews, Robert Satillo, uh, Alexandra Medina, Fred D. LaRaza, Edward Daryl Harmon, Joseph Johnson uh, Jr., Donald Grissom, Samuel Harris, Wayman Spriggs, John R. Green, Juan Lopez, 
Thomas Ramirez, Roland G. Lopez, Samuel McGee, Robert L. Allen, and uh, and that's it for my uh, shout outs. I'd like to tell everybody to, you know, donate to the station and keep it alive. You can do a $90 donation and get a 50th anniversary KPF t-shirt and you can donate $50 and you can get two KFP, KPFT face masks right here. And a $25 donation will get you this special keychain, special keychain. And also go to kpft.org and hit the red donate button. And Hank Lamb's got a special book. I, I do have the book, and I will run get it here in the next caller and uh, talk to you about it here shortly. Now, all we right, need well, so long to the sacrificial lamb. Thank you, sir. Marie, are you ready? Hey, yes, I am. There we go. Um, this shout out is for my husband, Paul David at the Ferguson unit. Um, hey babe, hope you're doing well. As for nosotros, we're all doing pretty good. So, um, de te digo, I had a super long busy weekend y también today estaba muy busy. But anyways, um, como quiera, you know, I sent you some JPEGs, I also sent you some pictures. Um, hopefully by now you already got those. And, um, oh, me mom, yeah, you know, se fue para Mexico, so, you know, she already got there. And she's good. They're all good. Pero bueno, I love you. Cuídate. And good night. Sarame. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now, as mentioned, I have a book called the change agent. It's Damon West. Uh, he's a former college quarterback who was sentenced to prison and it changed his whole life. And then the experiences that he had in prison changed the rest of his life. He's out, he's successful. And the book is called The Change Agent. Well, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, at any rate, we have that for a $50 pledge to the prison show. 713-526-5738, make the pledge, and you'll get the book. Now, aside from that, we need people that are regular donors, like monthly donors. We call them sustainers. I'm one, David's one. Uh, Mike, are you a sustainer? Yeah, that's a yes, okay. Uh, anyway, sustainers enable KPFT to pay the bills on a regular basis instead of quarterly or every other month or two, whatever these drives are now. And that really stabilizes the station quite a bit. It helps us a lot. It's a steady revenue source. So the lights stay on, the transmitter power stays on, you know, out of the transmitter shack and that sort of thing. Uh, I do not know if the book can be sent to inmates. I got a question about that. I, I sort of doubt it because it's not directly from the vendor. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you cannot. So, uh, that, you know, that question is answered. At any rate, 713-526-5738. Uh, make a pledge in any amount, but if you want the book, $50 pledge will get it. And uh, a first $50 pledge, I only have the one. And then, uh, yeah, only from the publisher or Amazon. It's got to be an approved vendor. So uh, that answers that question. Thank you. Uh, now, you, the other way that you can pledge is to go to the KPFT website, kpft.org. Just click on the red donate button over on the right-hand side of the page, and it will open up a little drop-down menu uh, that says uh, select program, something of that nature. And you just, you know, you open that, click on the prison show. Uh, you might have to scroll down to it and make your donation. It all goes in the same pot. The, the thing is that this show gets credit for it, and they look at that uh, when they determine what's going to happen with programs and programming. We, for many years now, we've been able to hold our own and everything, but it is so much tougher right now. Uh, as I said, the last couple of years, things for KPFT have just gotten worse and worse as far as fundraising. And it's not that, uh, you know, it's not that you 
people who donate aren't doing your part. It's that the people who don't donate are not doing their part. That's community radio, and it takes the community to keep this radio on the air. So if you love your loved ones, if you want them to be able to hear the show, if you want to be able to do the shout-outs, 713-526-5738. Okay. And now also tell the them about here. The texting. Don't worry about that right now, Mike. <laughs> I, I'm not even sure that's working right now. Uh, I'm just going with the, the surefire ways of doing it. Okay. So uh, a call from Francis. This is from my husband, Francis. Francis. Daddy, I love you. I miss you so much. This week we have celebrated the birth of the love of my life. From the day you were born, you were destined to be my husband and go through this life together. Um, we just have to get through this part, and that means our rewards are going to be so much greater when you are past this prison sentence and out here in our lives together. And I work towards that every day, and I would, that's what keeps me going every day, just one day closer to when we'll be living our life together out here. And um, you say strong, you're the strongest, um, most resilient person I've ever known, and, and I admire you, you inspire me, and you just keep doing you, sweetheart, just stay who you are. You've made so many positive changes, and, and those that hate you for it, that's on them, you know, just shake it off, brush them off. I love you, Chris. You stay strong, sweetheart. Happy birthday, and I love you, and can hardly wait till we get to see each other again. I love you, Chris. Hey, Poncho, you hang in there, stay strong, keep your head up, and keep your people motivated, and just remind everybody that every day that you survive in there, and every day that has passed is one day closer to when you can live your life out in the world. So you hang in there. Chris, stay strong, sweetheart. I love you. We've got this. Just shake them off. Shake off those haters, sweetheart. I love you. You're my hero. You are my everything and always will be. I love you, baby. Bye. All right. Thank you. Uh, Miss Stacy? Yes. You're on. This is to my husband, Sporty Black at East Town Unit. Hey, baby love, this is Wifey here in Virginia, kissing you our common strength blues chaser on a Monday night, letting you know I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm out here thinking of you every minute of every day and missing you good. <coughs> Excuse me. I trust you're doing fine. Um, I know this period during this pandemic is tough on you, um, but I know you got what it takes and that's staying focused and strong for us uh, as I'm out here doing the same. I love you baby. Uh, I got wind I can order you some e-com with the extras so I'll do that ASAP. I just got word not long ago um, so I should probably in the morning get it out. Um, I know you're wondering about our girls. They're up to their usual being my shadow looking out for me. Um, you know looking out for me. I've been giving them treats from Daddy. Um, Pops is on the mend and doing much better. And also, I've been hearing from you consistently. I got the 9th, 29th, and 30th today, and I'm devouring them as we speak. Um, I've sent you out one envelope this morning, and I trust you got the few kissing you pictures by now. Um, also, baby, I turned off the Amazon auto renewal on the mag, so don't be worrying about that. That's taken care of. Yeah, baby, this is just my voice all up in your ear to bring you a smile, um, to bring you a smile to your face and giving you all my attention, letting you know I'm out here eternally and absolutely all yours as you're mine. I love you so much and I miss you, miss you deeply. Mwah. Take care, sweetheart. I love you. Well, thank you so much. Miss Georgina's call.
Good evening, Prison Show. This is Georgina from the UK with a shout out for William Irvin and the Polanski Unit. Hello, Will. Thank you for the lovely card that I've just received um, with the little French bull, uh, bulldog on it and he uh, says, I missed you already. It's such a lovely card. Thank you. Um, I love you too. <laughs> Um, you will have got my JPay by now with with my uh, opinions and my disgruntledness. Um, I think we come from very, very different worlds. I've lived in different countries and travelled a lot and lived in different sorts of communities. And my worldview is very different. And also I come from a country that was, a, you know, a colonial, had an empire and the aftermath of that has meant we manage our society very differently, especially with issues of race. Anyway, you know, it's, it's, I know it's, anyway, I'm not going to say too much, but yeah, I'm reeling. <laughs> but I hope I didn't make you too angry by my, uh, not giving you any slack. Anyway, um, I hope you've had a good week and that you're okay. And thank you so much for this card. It's really lovely. I am letting things slide off me other than things you say, which really piss me off. Um, I can't let that go. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll stop now. Um, thank you, Prison Show, for letting me do the shout out. And uh, yeah, I love you, Bill. You take care. Bye. Thank you. Uh, Rosalinda. Hey, guys. Well, this shout out is for my brother, Paul David Romero. He's uh, in Ferguson unit. And well, hopefully I don't get cut off. My battery is 1%. So, well, mijo, este, today I sold uh, gorditas today. So it was pretty good. Made a little bit of money. Um, made homemade gorditas and arroz con frijol. So it was a busy, 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 busy day. So I'm super tired. I'm ready for bed. But if I lay down in my bed, I think I would have fallen asleep in the meanwhile the radio sofa. I was here in the sofa. But the kid says uh, hi and hope to see you soon. I got two of your letters, um, the 27th and the 29th. I got those already. I'm glad you like my shout out from last time. I love you, mijo. Este, well, I put the wheels on the side and the chair on the side so you can fix it yourself however you want it. So the wheels are there for you whenever you get here. I have a big box of snacks like you had asked for. So they're good. They're ready to roll. Hopefully soon you can come out and you can start eating your snacks that you've been craving. You and I know what's up, right? I love you, mijo. Um, the kids said hi, like I said. Um, this weekend was an okay weekend. We stayed home. We didn't really do anything. But um, hopefully soon, you know, you'll be here. We can do a little cookout or something. Just waiting up, checking on that. Um, parole status so we'll go from there well mijo I hope you have a good night say hi to Nico for me take care I know he's your friend so y'all take care I love you miss you I hope to see you soon okay good night guys thank you get some rest I will <laughs> <laughs> uh Folks, if you're listening, go on Facebook and share this Zoom call with your friends so they can call in too. It looks like we may have time for a few more calls uh, towards the end of the show here. So be sure and get everybody on here that wants to. Uh, yeah, I, want right there. I want some gorditas. I want some gorditas. Oh, David wants gorditas. You should make a homemade right, well, gorditas. I, I want some. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll send them that way uh, on UPS. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That'll work. Just put it in a hot box and send it. Uh, David, can we get Miss Hannah? Hi, this is a message for Luigi Medrano at Polanski. Hey, my love, I hope you're well, and that by the time you hear this message, you've had a really good week. I hope you received your little econ package that I sent. Nothing too exciting in there, I know, but I hope it adds to your little stash of goodies and I'm certain you'll make good use of it all. Um, all good here. The weather's been absolutely awful, however. Uh, winter is definitely wanting to kick in. 
I would give anything to be able to be flying out to the US at the end of the month like I should have been. But as we know, this virus has ruined all the plans. Um, I am looking forward to still having the time off work though. And it'll give me the chance to sort out the new apartment as well. So I guess that's a small little bonus to it all. Um, it's Monday 5th now, so a day off work for me after working four night shifts in a row. Uh, no major plans for the week really, but I am taking Candy out tomorrow for lunch as a belated birthday treat. And then Friday I'm due to do dinner with uh, Debbie and James and Sadie and Paul. So you can guess who's the little known gooseberry in amongst the couples at this dinner date, can't you? Still, never mind. It'll be nice to catch up with all of them together. And not a lot else to tell really. So I guess for now I'll leave you in peace and hope that you have a really good weekend. Uh, take care, stay safe. I'll write you later today or tomorrow or maybe both actually, we will see. So as usual I look forward to hearing from you and send you tons of hugs and lots and lots of love. Um, I will catch you soon but until then be good and just know that I really miss you. Okay, I will speak to you soon, love. Um, yeah, just be good. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, thank you so much. Uh, hi, Tower. I would like to give, I would like to let my, hus my husband Wallace at the Darrington unit know how much I love him. But right now, I feel like everyone in the world needs some uplifting. So, baby, this is to you, too. Life is full of disappointments, failures, setbacks, changes, and disagreements. But none of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power to overcome anything that life throws at you. Therefore, there is nothing more powerful than a strong mindset. So surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you in ways or times that matter most. No person or situation nor circumstance can define who you are. No matter how hard it gets, trust that these tough times won't last. I know it's hard to see it now, but you will overcome this and what's to come and everything will be okay. So for now, find comfort in the fact that you are not alone in what you are feeling or going through. Believe in yourself because you are absolutely capable of great things in your life. Be great. Great things can only happen if you first believe that they can. So take action because anything is possible. Just believe in yourself first. Wallace, I love you no matter what. And remember that I got you always. Stay strong and keep your head up. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Can we get Miss Caitlin's call? This is a shout out for Beto Garza in Plonsky. Hey boo, how are you? I hope that you're in good health, staying safe, positive and smiling, that amazing smile of yours. As for me, everything is great. Um, all week I've never got, like, I never got symptoms. So I'm out of isolation now on October 6th. So everything is good here. Uh, my mom had to get tests as well as she was a close contact to me and she just got her test result back just now and she is negative, which is absolutely the most amazing news. I am nearly doing summer cells around the house. Um, so everything is good. Um, Everybody, uh, my mom also is asking for you. I want to thank you and your amazing mom for saying prayers for me and my mom at this time. Um, they totally, totally worked. Um, when I first got the positive result, I was like terrified. But everything now is okay. Um, the sun is shining. Um, please, please, please stay safe, um, look after yourself and stay positive. Oh, also, before I go, I want to thank you so much for your letters and your cards. 
which I received this week as usual. It brought a huge smile to my face. Um, so sending you the biggest, biggest, tightest hug wrapped up in love and magic. Uh, good night, sweet dreams. Know that you're amazing and that you are loved. And to everybody at the prison show, thank you all so much for making this happen. Lisa Marie. Hello. hello. Good evening, everybody. I just wanted to say hello to my handsome, wonderful, amazing husband, Sheldon Lee at Luther Unit. Those guys have been through a long lockdown. They finally came off on Sunday, but of course, my husband's hallway phones are not working. So we're working on that, and we're hoping that people will call to hopefully get them up. They're telling us about three days. So I wanted to also send a shout out to the guys in his dorm, Greg, Alex, Matt, Larry, David, Peanut, Victor, Lackey, Oscar, Michael, Andrew, Christopher, um, a couple guys on dorm 20, James, Chris, and PJ. James, I had a chance to talk to your daughter. She's very sweet. Rue and Levi on dorm five, Billy O on 14, and the guys that are friends with my husband over at the trustee camp. I would also like to read a little something to my husband that I love very much. Love isn't always perfect. It isn't a fairy tale or a storybook, and it, it, it doesn't always come easy. Love is overcoming obstacles, facing challenges, fighting to be together, holding on and never letting go. It is a short word, easy to spell, difficult to define, and impossible to live without. Love is work, but most of all, love is realizing that every hour, every minute, and every second was worth it because you did it together. I love you, Shelton Lay. I'm very proud of you. You're my warrior. You have a good night, honey, and thank you, Prison Show. Thank you. David, can we get Miss Kathy? Hi, Chris and So, this is Kathy, and my shout out is for Randy Strickland on the Polanski unit. Hi, babe. Um, I just wanted to um, pre record a shout out for you for Friday night. I'm not feeling too great today. I just need some rest, I'm sure, and I'm trying to get that. So I'm probably not going to uh, try to go on the meeting tonight online, but I wanted to let you know I love you very much, and I don't know what I would do without you. Uh, just, just listen to me and calm me down and just be there for me. I love you so much, and I, um, I'll talk to you soon, hopefully. All right. Thanks, Prison Show. Bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, Tashawana. Tashawana, it's your call. There you go. Go ahead. Tashawana. Tashawana. Okay. Pardon me? Toshana. Well, Toshana. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was saying it wrong. Sorry, Toshana. She's oh, in the unit. They're just not saying anything. We'll come back to them. Miss Judy. Good evening, everybody. I am calling to shout out to Rodney Reed. Hey, R, I love you, miss you. Hope you're doing well. Happy Monday. Everything is fine here. I talked to Juana briefly last night and sent you a JPay early, early this morning with all of the information. And um, you're probably going to get it tonight, which you won't hear this until Friday, but um, still stay current. I mailed that back 56 and, and started 57. I'll mail that out on Friday. I'm going up to TJ and Ty's this weekend, and we'll be there from Saturday until Wednesday. I'm looking forward to spending time with KJ. 
they're going out Sunday and I'll be babysitting on my own for the first time. So it's been uh, 27 years since I babysat a baby. So cross your fingers for me. TJ is surprising Ty and they're going kayaking. It'll be good for the two of them to get away for a couple hours and just enjoy some time alone. Kay and Adam are doing well. Nothing else really new to report. Um, I've got all the messages from Jane on Friday. I'll keep checking e-com and we'll order your care package as soon as they have some more of the items that you want. I got your requests and we'll get as much of it as I possibly can. I just want you to know that I miss you like crazy and I love you lots. Sending you lots of hugs and kisses. Stay strong, keep the faith, continue to hope and dream. Our dreams are alive and well. Thinking of you and praying for you. 560 and 626. Good night and sweet, sweet dreams. I love you, Rodney. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. And let's see. Uh, Miss Lydia. Shauna's got her microphone on now. Well, uh, uh, yeah, let's go ahead with Miss Lydia. We'll, we'll come right back to her. I was trying to look out to Miss Tashana. She had a hard time getting a mic on. Just unmuted. Uh, this my shout out goes to Daddy Wallace at the dancing unit, and I hope you're safe. And I love you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you. And uh, I'm safe, and I love. I, I really do hope you're safe, and I hope that I hope that you'll be you'll be in my dreams, <laughs> and I miss you, and I'm having to start speaking because I can't breathe right now, and <laughs> yeah, and I love you, and I miss you, and love you, bye. Um, hey, Daddy, it is me, Tashana. I wanted to let you know that I have not written because I have really been busy with high school and which I've been doing very well in. I've been working out and staying positive and I hope that you are also safe and remaining positive. I can't wait to see you. And all right, Dad, I hope you have a good night. I love you. All right, thank you. Uh, Miss Lydia now. Good morning, this shout out is for Beto Alamijo. It's Monday, October the 5th at 9.30 a.m. And uh, I'm fixing to head out to the bank to make deposits. Today is payday. The good thing is the banks are all close by here on the Lana, so it's not far. Um, Kathy's mother tested negative for COVID and Kathy is fine, Hito. We're all good. David and Mariano are still in town. Uh, I know that they celebrated David's birthday on the 4th. And uh, Benny is fine up in Florida. We're all good, mijo. Uh, Theo Jr. was uh, here yesterday working on his boat. Um, he hasn't fixed it yet, so he hasn't gone fishing. The, but other than that, there's not much going on. Uh, Anthony is uh, doing hours at that barber school to get his license and uh, Frank and Jason went by there to get free haircuts. He needs people to train on. And uh, Frankie said that uh, for Jorge to wait till he has at least 500 hours uh, up his sleeve before he goes over there. Uh, I visited with him for a bit. He's doing fine too, mijo. Este, I spoke with Valerie last night and she's fine. Um, send me the sizes that I requested so I can request that catalog for Larry and you. Okay? And that's basically it, mijo. I'm glad that you got seen by uh, that doctor from UTMB on that video conference. So that was good. Este, cuídate, papacito. Este, estamos todos bien. Que Dios te bendiga. Saludos to the guys. Take care. Love you. Bye. Hey, that reminds me. I want to say something real quick. Guys uh, in the units, and women too, if, you know, if this ever gets to you. If, if you ask someone to help you, and uh, like if you ask us to go uh, to TDCJ with your medical issue and stuff, 
And then when they come to interview you, you say you don't have the issue. It's very hard for us to get you any help. <laughs> they, they answer back and say, there's no such problem. All right, just thought I'd mention that. Uh, let's see now. We are down to Wendy Bailey. Oh, Wendy. Wendy? I'll take a place. Hey, Mr. Clarence, go right ahead. How y'all doing tonight? We're same as always. We're doing good. Oh, mysterious. Mike, I know you're hiding back there somewhere. Ellen, I was watching a pretty good game, but my Chiefs is not too mean, so I'm going to cut them off for just a second here. I'm sorry that I missed calling in these last couple of weeks, man, but I just, medication been had me knocked out, man. But I ain't forgot about none of them now, now. Old White, Barnes, Brown, King. You brother, hope all y'all doing well, man. Oh, Corey. Little fat muscle moving on that uh, Styles unit. But the rest of you on that Polanski unit, man. I, I know how y'all feel right now with that lockdown, man, but y'all take care, brother. I'd rather see you locked down than to be sick, man. You don't want to be sick. You know, if you can help it, don't expose your families to none of that madness neither. But no, I'm, I'm praying for you, brothers, man. Pulling for y'all. And doing the best I can out here. I wish they'd stop playing with my money and get sending me some money through this supplement check. But I can't rush that. They always find something new to come up with instead of dealing with this check. I don't know what's wrong with them. But that's life out here. Y'all take care, man. Know that I love you, brothers, man. Y'all look out for each other, man. And hopefully I can get on here next time. Y'all take care. Mohammed, I know you're listening out there somewhere. So get them brothers a call, man. Y'all take care. Thank you. Catch y'all later. All right. Thank you. Uh, David, you got Miss Vicky? at the Darrington unit. My baby boy, miss you. And I love you. Sending lots of prayers your way. Along with some big hugs. Um, I hope you're doing okay. I'm doing okay. Um, we're working on a little plumbing issue. We have a leak in the wall at the bathtub faucet and um, we can't find a plumber to come out today so we're trying to take care of it but <laughs> oh, I tell you but um, I got a couple of letters from you last week I wrote you pretty much every night last week I think there was only a couple of nights I didn't didn't write um, okay, son, uh, Vernon just got in from getting the plumbing things that we need to get that fixed, so I'm cutting it a little short this week, but I love you, I'm sending lots of hugs and kisses from Texas Prison Show, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Wendy Bailey, we're going to ask you again and hope you're on. You gotta unmute yourself. Uh, it's apparently on your phone because you're not muted on Zoom. Okay, we will come back around to you. Nancy Robert? Nancy? Well, I don't know what's going on with these folks tonight. All right, we're gonna move on. 9028. Do you have any audio? I don't, see, any of them too. I don't see either one of them two having any Hello? audio. Hello? Yes, you're on. Hi, this is Lisa Rodney Reed at the Plunk Unit. Hi, Rodney, this is Jackie um, from Seattle. Just wanted to call and say hi. Um, I miss you and I love you. I'm glad that you're in good health and good spirits, keeping the faith, keeping your head up, staying positive. And I uh, just wanted to call because 
I know you're expecting my call. I know I haven't called for a while, so I apologize, but I'm calling now. And um, me, i just been having a really busy weekend. I'm really, really tired right now. Me and Todd ran around a Featherway in downtown Seattle all day Saturday. And I uh, got some more pictures of Pike Place for you. Um, and then yesterday, I, I ended up going out to Lakewood and cleaning in another duplex, one that you haven't seen yet. So I took pictures of that. And I sent you oh, uh, three envelopes full of pictures today, so you should be getting them Friday. Anyways, I just wanted to call and say I love you and I miss you. I'm always thinking about you and praying for you every day. I'll try to give you a call uh, again soon. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Love you. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Prison Show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wendy, are you connected? I mean, I, I don't know uh, what's going on with your call. You're not muted on our end, so either you're not connected to audio or something. All right, let's just move on then. 7069. Good evening. This is Good. for what? For Juan Segura in East Ham Unit. Just want to tell you, baby, I miss you. You have no idea how much I've been missing you. You're always in my heart. I love you more than ever. Don't ever forget how special you are to me. We've been doing okay. I just got off work late. It was a chaotic Monday at the office. But um, hopefully I get some good news this week from Ross. I did receive your letter Saturday, the letter you wrote on the 27th. I'm hoping to hear from you this week. Just keep saying your prayers, baby. Good things are coming. Good night. I love you very much. I love you with all my heart. Don't forget that. Hope to hear from you soon. I miss your voice. Take care of yourself, please. Be safe out there. And hope to hear from you soon. Love you, baby. Good night. Good night. Let's see. 6657. Last four of your phone. 6657. Did I unmute? Okay, we will move on and come back to you. Uh, 0687. Oh, there you are. There you are. Okay. I'm sorry. It wouldn't take it. I'm so sorry. This is Julie from Georgia. Do a shout out to my nephew, Wesley, at the Polinsky Unit. Just want to say hi and thinking about you. Um, I hope you got my letter. Um, I went out of town the other weekend, so I missed your call, missed calling on Monday, and I apologize. Um, everyone's doing good here. Your Uncle Ronnie says hi. Um, just wanted to tell you, Alicia's baby's going to be a year old this weekend. I'll take pictures and send them to you, because I know she's like one of your favorite oh, great uh, cousins, I guess. But um, like I said, everyone's doing good. I talked to your dad and Paula the other day, and they seem to be doing real good. So um, just want you to know that you're in our prayers and that uh, we're thinking of you. Um, may God bless you and keep you safe and comfortable and know that I love you, sweetheart. So I will write you again this weekend and make my next call next week. Thank you guys for everything y'all do. I appreciate it as I know everyone else does. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Five eight one one. Five eight one one. You have to unmute. Hello. Hello. Hey, can you hear us now? Yes, we can. Oh, this is for Isidro at the Polensky unit. Hi, Mijo. Just want to tell you I love you and I miss you. And we have a little surprise for you. Happy birthday, Isidro. Happy birthday. I miss you. Happy birthday, Isidro. Isidro. I love you, Isidro. Hey, Mijo. I love you. Um, hope to see you soon. And... You just take care in there, okay? I love you. Happy, happy birthday. I hope you're doing well, okay? We miss and we love you. We miss you and we love you. Here's uh, your tia, Rachel. Hey, mijo. Love you and we miss you. And you're blessed with another year and many more to come. And we hope to see you soon. I pass you to your brother. 
Hi. Hi, brother. I uh, just want to tell you happy birthday. I uh, hope you're doing good in there. Um, we're sitting out here thinking about you all the time. So just know we're, uh, you know, hoping and that you're going to get out. And, uh, you know, we'll write you soon. All right. Love you. Good night, mijo. We love you. Okay, good night, y'all. Bye, Cedro. I love you, Cedro. Bye. Bye, Jeb. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Everybody. Good night. All right, uh, we got to keep it down to one minute. Four zero nine seven. Four zero nine seven. You have to unmute. Okay, we're going to move on. Five zero three two. You have to unmute. Last four, five, zero, three, two. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. About one minute. My, I want to give a shout out to my brother, Art, at Arturo Garza in the Polinsky unit. I want to let him know everybody is good um, and to stop um, sending my sister letters and giving us hope because she sure did have us all on three ways. And then it turns out it was not two brothers. You know, your sister believes everything you said, and she sure did hang up on all of us because <laughs> she was mad. But anyways, I just want to tell you, brother, give you these last uh, lyrics. You can't tell me you're not worth trying for. I can't help it. There's nothing I want more. Yeah, I would fight for you. I lie for you. Walk the wire for you. Yeah, I die for you. You know it's true. Everything I do, brother, we do it for you. Bye, brother. We love you. We miss you, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you, prison Thank show. you. Uh, zero six eight seven. We already got to you, didn't we? Bueno. No. Oh, bueno, bueno. Hola, One buenas month. noches, Mr. Hank. Un, un sí, gracias. Sí, gracias. Hola, este saludo es para mi hijo Jan Ramírez. Hola, hijo. Aquí saludando a mi niño hermoso, deseándole que haya tenido una buena semana y que tenga un buen fin de semana, mi hijo, y decirle que lo queremos mucho, que es muy importante para nosotros. Siempre estamos hablando por ti, hijo. También te manda saludos tu esposa. Me mandó un mensaje que te, te dijera que no iba a poder llamar porque tenía doble shift para trabajar. Así que te manda saludos ella también, hijo. Y cuídate, te quiero mucho y salúdame a los muchachos, a Félix, a Edgardo, a Joseph Bien. Te quiero mucho, mijo, cuídate, Dios te bendiga y sigue con tu fe, mijo, no desmayes. Te queremos mucho, adiós, hijo, hasta pronto. Gracias, Mr. Hank, buenas noches. Buenas noches. And uh, if you want to write us, uh, uh, what do we do if people want to write us? Uh, where do they write us? Because Love at Boulevard, I don't know if they can do it anymore yeah, we've been doing it over my house all right so can we say that address again yeah my address of course it's the prison show care of david collinsworth at 4414 mccleister drive that's m c c l e e s t e r drive in spring texas 77373 thank you for allowing everybody to write uh, to your personal address all right, Daniel, thank you so much. Folks, I, I didn't mention it. I should have pitched right from the get-go. This is our first show in Fun Drive for October, and we need uh, everyone to get involved. You can donate easily and safely at kpft.org, or you can donate easily and safely by calling 713-526-5738. Again, kpft.org or 713-526-5738. And we will be in Fun Drive for the rest of this month. So every Friday night, uh, we need people to get together and give. You can give anytime. It doesn't just have to be uh, during the Fun Drive. Uh, or it doesn't have to be just on Friday. You can give it to us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. cetera. Uh, and we need it. We really badly need it. You know, our Fun Drives have been going uh, worse and worse over the last several years. And really, if you want this show to remain on the air, there's only one way to do it, and that's give. So if KPFT goes off, we're off. 
you know, that's the way it is for now. Uh, we're looking at alternatives. We're looking at things we can do to, uh, you know, spread the show around more and find, uh, you know, alternative stations, that sort of thing, where people can listen to us in more than one way. Uh, you can also check us out on our Facebook page. Uh, there's usually something going on over there. Uh, pinned to the top of the page every week is th this Zoom call. But there's usually a way uh, over there that David usually shares or Mike or myself uh, where you can click on something and go to and donate via Facebook, uh, donate to the prison show. Really, it's to KPFT. So if you see us post it, trust me, it, it's all about helping the prison show. Just, uh, folks, stay tuned for Rebel Radio, but be sure and call 713-526-5738. Make a pledge or go to kpft.org. Click the red donate button and make a pledge there. And Y'all have a great week. Even the inmates that actually donated and sent us checks, uh, we got those things turned in. Thank you very much, John. And, uh, and you know, if the inmates can actually buckle down and make pledges, there's no reason why we can't. Um, I'll make another pledge, even though I'm already a sustainer. But before the pledge drive is over, I will make another pledge. Y'all, make sure you're wearing your mask. I know it's tough in there, but the coronavirus is crazy. If our president can have a coronavirus, anybody can have a coronavirus. So I'm not going to get Hank started with that. But, you know, um, washy, washy. If you think it's been touched by something or you've touched it, just wash it. And keep your own mask. Don't wear somebody else's mask. Just wash your own mask. Get your couple of them there and just keep them, keep them washed on a steady basis. Y'all have a good night. Like Hank said, stay tuned for Rebel Radio.